Without your Dara Prime on TV, your Sunday evening can be complete. Welcome to The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. Today, I'm talking about the benefits of COVID-19 in Nigeria. Comfort is back, and she's telling us about fraud and the reason why people fall victim to fraud. Is child maintenance compelable or voluntary? Titi Lokbe, who makes a debut today, is going to explain what this means to us. Another debutant, Tolu, tells us about the stereotypes surrounding the emotions and mental health of men. And finally, Uche is stating clearly that no means no. As always, your panelists are here to share ideas aimed at provoking thoughts with no holds barred. Stay with us. Benefits of COVID-19 Allow me to be cynical. COVID-19 is one of the best things to have happened to Nigeria in a long time. Why? It proved to us that as a people, we can have the ear of our political elites. It told us that we can improve the health sector in a matter of weeks. It reassured us that the quality of service that public health facilities provide abroad can actually be available locally in Nigeria. At least a lot of people hail the COVID-19 center in Yaba. But I have two questions that I would like us to ponder on. One, how were we able to set up such number of health centers within a short time? Rockefeller Foundation spends enormously on the health sector, as does other health care financiers in the USA. According to a research data which I stumbled out online in 2003, Researchers' research and development expenditures were approximately $95 billion, with $40 billion coming from public sector and $55 billion coming from the private sources. In 2016, the research and development spending by pharmaceutical companies in the USA was estimated to be around $59 billion. I bet you get the picture. We survived COVID-19 not because government did the job, but because government had the unsolicited support of private sector, thanks to CACOVID and other partners. Globally, health sector is not strictly government business. Why do we dump everything at the doorstep of federal governments in Nigeria? In the USA, ownership of the health, health center system or healthcare system is mainly in private hands. Though federal, states, county, city governments, and all other governments have facilities, as of 2018, there were over 5,500 registered hospitals in the United States. Over 4,000 are described as community hospitals. Nigeria can never excel if we continue to dump everything at the doorstep of the federal government. We want to be like America, but we are not ready to do what pertains in America. Hold your local and state governments accountable. Get the private sector involved. Secondly, why did the government respond quickly? The government responded quickly because we became a threat to their continuous existence or survival. They all had the domestic helps and junior staff. Their families couldn't, I mean, live indoors all day. Nobody was excluded. We were all vulnerable. So the only solution was to keep you and I safe, for them to remain safe. If the elite had the option of traveling abroad, very few health facilities, if any, would have been built during this period. Now, let's juxtapose this by elections. As with COVID-19, government focuses on the population that is relevant to their continuous existence and the sustenance of their quality of life. They know the middle class and what of the elites do not have a say because they won't vote. So all they do is allow thugs man the roads and the parks, fund travel expenses of their stalwarts, and provide coverage for the touts that are used. The moment you begin to vote, you will become priority. And like COVID-19, all your needs, roads, schools, security will be provided not because they care about you, but because they need you in order to remain comfortably in power. That is absolutely correct. <laughs> <laughs>
That is absolutely correct. Well, you know, I want to speak about the, you know, the private se sector. Yes. Now, I'm a firm believer that the private se sector will drive development in our country. If you look at even statistics, right, 70 to 80 percent of jobs are created by the private sector. Private sector, yes. You know, SMEs and even the GDP of the nation, you know, plays a, a huge role in that. Mm -hmm. However, we cannot you know, absorb government of responsibilities. True. They must create a thriving environment, an enabling environment to do business, right? Mm -hmm. Check the ease of doing business in Nigeria. The, re the, the indices are so low. You have taxation to deal with. Yeah. You have poor access or no access to capital. Mm -hmm. You have very little um, government support or infrastructure. So as a private entity, right, as a private sector organization, you're first of all fixing things that government should have fixed first. Mm. I think the agitation of the people is that can you, the federal government, right, do your own duty first of all, mm. create that enabling environment and it's easy for the private sector to then come in and do the rest or take it up from there. Yeah. But you have a very valid point that mm. when they start to believe that the middle class, um, they can win elections with the middle class, yeah. then they'll start to pay attention to some of the things that actually impact us. Impact us. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay, I mean, yeah, I totally agree with you. I mean, that sounds very interesting. Uh, when I hear middle class, though, I start to cringe a little. <laughs> well, that's a whole conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, again, what's the percentage of the middle class, you know, compared to who you would call lower than the middle class, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, what you're saying is basically, I mean, if I'm going to sum up your, your it's saying who won't die. I mean, nobody wants to die. That's it. And I feel very, you know, importantly that, you know, the more you have, the less you want to die. Yeah, of course. Right, of so... Course. Uh, what has happened is they've gone from saying, from self-preservation to the fact that if these people also do not leave, then we cannot leave. Mm -hmm. I think it was a lot that said that if the child of the poor man did not kill you, did not he's not well fed. yesterday, he's not well fed, tomorrow he will eat you, mm -hmm. you know, basically. So I think that's what happened. That's so it's it. almost like a reverse engineering. Mm -hmm. You know, let's allow these people to leave yeah. because we want to leave. Mm -hmm. But again, if you look at the, I mean, the difference between how much was raised and how much was spent, yeah. then you start to ask yourself, um, are, they re are we really being responsible with you the know, funds? That's, that's the first it. thing. You know, the other thing then also is post-COVID, then what? So we set up it. all these health centers to deal with COVID. Yeah. Then after COVID, what happens? Mm -hmm. Are we... You know, then what do we start to treat? You have a valid point, but look at it also in this sense. As much as you had everything set up, you had specific hospitals who were charging triple, double, yeah. quadruple of what you're going to get the in same every abuse. other. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oxygens were being used in those hospitals. Mm -hmm. So even though you think, yes, they set up all these things. Mm -hmm. The facilities that were really required yeah. to provide the health care was not really available. available so yeah. a lot of high death rates mm -hmm. there. Oxygen was scarce everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yet in certain hospitals who they were charging excess. millions, mm -hmm. who needed you to pay a certain deposit, yeah. were having access to all these things. Yeah. You see, I'm, I'm going to do a quick response, I mean, add up to what you guys have said. But I think we have comfort from Abuja. Comfort. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, in your view, um, I, I think for me the tragedy um, was the fact that even new hospitals were built. I thought that anybody with vision at that point, knowing that we already had a crisis in the healthcare system, would rather use the funds at that time to improve upon the healthcare system so at that time yeah. and then expand. Mm -hmm. So you could have had, you could go to, let's say, Amadou Bello um, University Teaching Hospital and have a section that was clearly dedicated to COVID. Mm -hmm. And, but then the whole hospital would have, you know, been able to, you know, partake Benefits. from the funds that came in. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is what is going to keep on being our problem. Yeah. This crisis of leadership, this lack of vision, yeah. lack of focus, lack on, of understanding. And as I, one of the, um, one of um, the yeah. panelists said um, judicious use of finances. Funds. I mean, this is not our money. People gathered money, gave you, at least you would use it with some, True. you know, with some sense. And, um, you, you know, I, I like the cynicism, you know, what has come out of COVID because the truth about it is that nothing has changed. Nothing. Money came in, people used it, spent it. Yeah. I mean, we struggled to reach 3,000 deaths. 
mm. in the whole, I mean, as much as they struggle to add, give us numbers that we were dying and going to be decimated by this day, and so all this money was needed. Mm. Uh, okay, faith, God, the universe, science, something, you shall kept those numbers down. So oh, I think they yeah. ought to be ashamed of themselves and, at and, this point. And I think, like you rightly said, right, and that's one thing, and that's one thing we've been grappling with for a long time, which is why I wrote this speech, that listen, all this thing comes back to the government and how the government feels us. But I'd like us to look at the Rockefeller Foundation bit. Now, we know we have issues in our healthcare system. What will it, what will it cost? I don't want to use Dangote. He's doing too, too many things. There are so many other companies around. So let's say, but let's use a Dangote as an example. Let's use Dangote, definitely, yeah. yes. Now, if he comes in and says, okay, Federal Medical Center, Bayosa or Abuja or Lagos, anywhere, I'm going to take up the salary or not even salary, I'm going to give some freebies to some doctors, additional whatever, maybe some allowances every month. So doctors that work between this time and this time, this is what they get. So in addition to whatever the government is giving to them, all what our doctors need is motivation. I was in the clinic two days ago with my, just to get immunization for my child, and there was a nurse there, and a senior nurse got angry, where is this nurse going to? She should come here and join me, because they were already on the staff. Then another person came out and said, sorry, she's going to do circumcision. So a nurse that's supposed to be attending to kids who came for immunization had to leave that post to quickly go attend to some I mean, uh, circumcised uh, whatever. But we still have a lot of doctors who would not have left Nigeria if they could get well paid. So we know government has failed. And I think it's that time we come to that reality that our government has failed. Yeah. But what can we now do in our, to, to, to favor ourselves, not the government now, yes. just to make sure that the health is getting better. But you see... When it comes to health, we can talk on and on. But anyway, let's go to the next bit. But before that, I'd like to say, please continue to wash your hands, wear a mask, stay safe, practice social distancing. And up next is comfort. Stay tuned. The Sting. In 1973, Universal Pictures released a film called The Sting. It was a complicated plot involving two grifters that successfully defraud a mob boss. The film went on to win seven out of its 10 Oscar nominations, including Best Original Screenplay. The reason was not far-fetched. The film depicted the lengths confidence tricksters will go to to create elaborate schemes and build an architect around the plot to defraud people of their money. At the end of the film, even the room that the final scene took place in was an illusion. In Malcolm Gladwell's book, Talking to Strangers, he sums up the reason we get blindsided by people's behavior and actions by stating that you believe someone not because you have doubts about them. Belief is not the absence of doubt. You believe someone because you don't have enough doubts about them. And this is the case with victims of scams specifically scams not targeted at a person's greed. Scams, cons 419, as we call it on this side of the Atlantic, has been with us since heaven knows when, and with each passing year, the sophistication in the game grows. I became a partner on the Booking.com site. With the downturn of the economy, we were all becoming more creative. Shortly, I had my first client. Something was off. And in a carefully crafted response to a follow-up chat inquiry by the client, I turned down the reservation. I went to the app to report myself and tell the reason I declined the reservation. Apparently, I was out of time to seek a cancellation. Boy, was I in soup. His credit card was on the file and they would charge it if they were not informed. The reservation came with an airport pickup. The next morning, the day of the arrival, fleetingly, it struck me as odd that the client seemed blind to the fact that I had declined the reservation, even as I was revealed, relieved that he had taken no note of my decline. With a note of caution, I informed the transport company to pick him from the airport. At 2 p.m., as he was passing through immigration, he reached out to the transport company for help. He needed to make an online payment of 48,500 naira, uh, 48, naira to immigration. The transport company had catered to similar requests in the past. The difference was that they knew those clients. This was their red flag. 
In the meantime, on the other side of town, I was sweating like a Christmas goat. I had swept, scrubbed, cleaned, at the house, all in a mad rush because of the late booking. Within five minutes of seeing the alert, he had cleared out the account, thanked the driver, and promised to tip him with $1,000 when he came out. Then the penny dropped. As the world is on a steady decline and as a matter of urgency, we need to deploy the same time, energy, smart, patience, knowledge, as much as the con artists have to sharpen our gut instincts. This is the key to our survival going forward. We all need to have our wits about us, not suspicious of everything and everyone, but tuned in and listening to ourselves. Over to the floor. The realities of our time, I dare say. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yes. And and like I mean, like you rightly said, it's we don't it's easier for us to complain than to face the fact that we have not done enough homework as other the people on the negative side would do. I mean you're mm. talking about con artists. If you look at the criminals, maybe armed robbers and stuff, they want to rob you, they, they can monitor you for weeks on end just so that they can get what they want. But for us as humans, when we go around and we submit a proposal and the person says, I'm not available, you get angry, who does he think he is? I won't even go there anymore. And the, and the deal is off. So I think you rightly said that we're not really, we're not as tenacious as we should be at times. And I mean, since I like to look at Nigerian politics, maybe that's even why our political terrain is this way. <laughs> <We're not> <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, I always say, if it seems off, yeah. that it is off. Mm. Right? It's better to actually stall if you have any doubts about a particular activity. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I think we've had many years now of realizing that con artists are here to stay. It is almost, a, it's, in fact, it's almost a profession now for many people. It is. It's the easy way out because we believe that the people are very gullible, mm -hmm. right? So on the one hand, we're supposed to be very smart people who can see through funny stuff, but at the same time, we are also naive because we are very careless. Mm. I find that the average, and I hate to you know, put a blanket, but what I find is that we're not meticulous, we're careless in our documentation, we don't finish processes, mm. and then we want to resort to the culture of shouting, right, if a mistake has been made. Yeah, so yeah. you're supposed to do a cancellation, you don't do it. When they go ahead and initiate action, it's, you feel like it's easier if I shout, I'm going to get results. Mm. So that's the same persona we carry into every single thing, and that can get us into trouble more times than not. Yeah. Um, con artists, right? Um, I, I like the fact that said if we can actually transfer this ingenuity and creativity, yeah. imagine the... I actually personally believe that they should be hired for <laughs> um, financial services, yeah. right? And um, cyber security. Yeah. Because, and, and that's what a lot of organizations, well, in, in the Western world, if you're very good in those kind of things, Ooh, if you can crack a system, you should be hired. Yeah. Because you know, you can build in you case studies and, and scenarios. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Mm -hmm. If you're able to crack a firewall of an organization, they should yeah. hire you to run their cyber security end because you can see all the different scenarios and things that can go wrong. Yeah. But instead, we always criminalize things instead of creating opportunities where we can turn mischievous behavior into, into talent. talent absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely agree with you. And you know, a quote that just comes to mind, one of my favorite quotes is, the devil is in the detail, mm. right? And it goes both ways in this case. So like you said, the con artist has an ulterior motive and he spends weeks on end, and then, you know, yeah. once just studying you to be sure yeah. to find the loophole, mm. right? But you as a person, so I mean, he, he's, he's concerned about the details. Yeah. But you on the other side are not very concerned about the details. Mm -hmm. And more often than not, we just lack the discipline that is required. True. You know, and That's it's, just, word. it's mostly discipline. a discipline issue. Mm -hmm. you know? And I know Comfort said, you know, this is basically greed that is not uh, con, that is not targeted towards greed. But a lot of times, there's also a greed element. Mm. I always say when I hear people have been conned that you know nothing can cheat a man on this grid. You know, somebody comes in here and says, Oh guys, you know what, I'll give you a thousand you know, if you give me a hundred dollars each. Or I'll give you ten thousand if you give me five hundred dollars. I mean at that point your brain is calculating, eh, a thousand five hundred. You know, <laughs> <laughs> then your grid is your grid takes over more or less and says, Okay, let me do the thousand, mm -hmm. right? At that point it's the grid issue. You know, and again goes back to discipline. Yeah. You know, so it's important that we're very disciplined about our systems, our processes. As a business person, it's very important, you mm. know, that you have 
you know, processes and systems in place that help you actually, you know, find those, you know, those loopholes yeah. that you can get, you know, yeah. come by. Sorry, Tony, just to clear that, yeah. the $1,000 offer came after they had collected the 45, 48,000. So it wasn't put on the table before. And right. that's why the major thing for me is the, um, they say you don't, dis you don't disbelieve a person because not that, like, because you don't have doubts, but because you don't have enough doubts about, mm, about the person. And so what was taken advantage of was the fact that um, they do that for their incoming clients. Yeah. There are, they've done it several times. I know that a lot of them, yes, they might know them, but you have one or two on the off chance. And yeah. so that's where we're careless. Mm -hmm. The trusting, mm -hmm. because we're raised to be trusting. Because they're not giving when, you any reason to doubt. The, mm -hmm. I'll yeah, the first, yeah. exactly. Because you're, we are raised to be trusting. And mm -hmm. so we defer immediately to that truth that, I mean, I'm not a cheat. So this person who, uh, you know, is on the other side that's is true. most likely not a cheat. And that's the loophole. That's the um, psychology that is used. So they, they use that inroad um, playing on our psychology. But that's why we now need to be as smart. That's the advocacy here. My we need time. to spend as right. much time honing our gut instinct. We come with that naturally. And when, as, as um, I think which is said, um, once, you know, you have that doubt, just, you know, it, just go with just it. It's it a out. doubt. Mm. Don't do it. You just right. move. Instinct. Okay. Work with it. All right, Comfort. So, what next? After the break, Titi Lopez talks us through child maintenance. Child maintenance, is it compelable or voluntary? The question of the compatibility of a child maintenance is one that many demand answers to. The laws regarding children born in a marriage and the laws regarding children born outside of marriage do differ. Can a father be compelled to pay for, a child, for child maintenance of a child he did not want? This is, what, this is a great question. What is child maintenance? Child maintenance is an ongoing periodic payment made by a parent for the financial benefits of a child following the end of a marriage or any other relationship. Child maintenance is paid directly or indirectly by an obligor to an oblig obligee for the care and support of the children of a relationship that has been terminated, or in some cases, never existed. Parents generally have the responsibility to take care of their children and provide all they need to live. However, there are also instances where parents have failed to adequately provide for their children financially. As a result, many parents and guardians have turned to the courts or law enforcement authorities to enforce a child or guardian's support order. The object of a maintenance order is to protect and safeguard the welfare and well-being of the children of the marriage or children born outside of a marriage. Its purpose is to ensure that a child has the financial security and protection that he or she requires. Can a father who did not want the child be compelled to pay child maintenance? Yes, he can. Children born outside of a marriage are usually on the wrong ladder of the society in terms of maintenance. Most times, they are faced with denial and in some cases, outright abandonment by one or both parents. They are most often denied the necessary financial maintenance required by either of the parents. Nonetheless, Section 14.2 of the Child Rights Act states that every child has a right to maintenance from his or her parents or guardians in proportion to their financial capabilities and that the child has the right to pursue this right in family court in proper circumstances. The law compels parents of children to ensure the proper maintenance of their children. In a situation where the mother of the child does not need financial help from the father to take care of the child, the father does not need to pay child maintenance. Nonetheless, in a situation where she needs help, the father can be compelled to pay child maintenance as he is under an obligation by the law to take care of the child. In such a case, the child can apply, can apply to the welfare department of any state, which will in turn apply to the fam family court. For an order of the maintenance, in Lagos State, the criminal code law of Lagos State makes it a crime for a parent or a guardian to fail to provide for maintenance. By the combined provision of sections 206 and 207 of the criminal code law of Lagos State 2015, which states that it is the duty of every person as a head of a family or 
has charge of a child being a member of his household to provide the necessities of life for such child. And he is held to have caused any consequences which result to the life or health of any person because of any omission to perform that duty. Thus, a child who is denied necessary maintenance can make a formal report to the relevant law agencies to enforce this right. For instance, there are instances where a single mother will be unable to get financial assistance from the father of her child. It is usually advisable that a single mother who has found herself in such a situation should take full advantage of the section and help and seek help at the gender section of the police command Keja, Lagos, for example, for immediate prosecution. Finally, the position of the law is clear on the matter at hand. A father is compelable under the Child Rights Act 2003 criminal law of legal state to pay for child maintenance regardless of whether he wanted that child or not. What is your opinion? <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely have to go first on this one. Comfort you. you. Comfort you go yeah. first then. Because I'm a, because I'm a lawyer and um, uh -huh. um, I, for me, what just jumped out for me here is that the man again is the one, uh, you know, put front and center with um, the fight for equality and gender rights here, yeah, I think what we also need to do is to make it um, level, uh, a level playing field. Um, it needs to, th that probably needs to be reworked also. So it's not just the man, it's also the woman. And any one of them can be made to, it can be compelled. So if the woman has, then she should be made to pay also. If it's the man that has, then he should be made to pay. Not um, one-sided. I think for me, that was what, you know, um, um, stood out for me the most. Now that we are, you know, playing this level playing field, it should apply to maintenance for children. Mm -hmm. Over. Thank you. All right. Oh, okay, for me, right. Um, I think for me, what is worrying is the level of illiteracy that I'm starting to realize that many of us are suffering from. I can admit here that I didn't even know that we had the laws, laws right, True. that compels yeah. a father to pay for maintenance for his child. Mm -hmm. I know loads of single women, right, or, you know, I mean, right now it's not balanced. I know loads of single women who have had to struggle for years alone and they didn't know that they had, you know, the yeah, recourse right. to the law. Mm -hmm. And you see, this thing is consistent in everything that affects us as Nigerians. We we have no awareness of the laws that protect us in employment, in marriage, mm -hmm. in ch children, just name it. So I think for me, right, we really need to start to change the curriculum of our schools. True. Somewhat, I don't know at what level, because information is, they say knowledge is power. But you can't even have, how do you act, how do you fight for what, b b what is your right when you don't even know? Mm -hmm. I didn't know, I can admit, I didn't know until this session. Yeah. So this is new information that I'm going to now start to, Put yeah. out there. Yeah, absolutely agree. You know, which is why I'll add a little to what you just the, the quote. You know, the quote has been updated a bit. So it's now applied knowledge is power. Yeah. Because guess what? The knowledge is there. But then we don't have it. Application. We don't, you know, application, right? Applied knowledge is power because there's the knowledge. I've never heard, I mean, this is the first I'm hearing of this. Like you said, I know loads of single mothers mm -hmm. that struggle year in, year yes. out, you know, to feed their children. Mm -hmm. And their fathers are actually in a place, in a better position to actually provide yeah. this, you know, um, basic support. necessities of life. Yeah. But they don't even realize that they can seek, you know, redress in court. But hey, there's also the part where you go to court, you know, do you actually get those injunctions and then are they enforced, mm. right? Because, yeah, so they, they don't know. So when they now know and they now make, the, you know, the decision to, you yeah. know, yeah. to take that step, do they actually get the redress? Mm. Yes, yeah, I think, I think. The other question, yeah. sorry, quickly okay. is, I don't understand the part where they say the man that did not want the child, <laughs> but that's a whole different conversation. That's the whole essence of this yeah, conversation. That, maybe you can because help as a lawyer. What does that mean? I, I, I'm, <laughs> a man, I'm a man, I don't know what it means. You're taking a risk. At the point where you're doing certain things, you know there's right. the possibility of, of this exact, happening. Right. So whatever the outcome is, if you, if you say you don't want it, and yeah. the mother of the child says, I want it, I'm yes. not willing to risk my life to go through mm -hmm. an abortion yeah at which the is point, illegal i guess exactly it's at, illegal the, in point, Nigeria. Yeah, it at is. the point okay. where you are you are having that uh, conversation you should know that whatever <laughs> happens you have so a responsibility yeah. it's no longer i don't want it it's yes. now we yes. go it exceeds just your One own person. decision yeah. and also just to reply to comfort the reason why it might sound like they are going after men is because in nigeria especially you That's have too many single mothers. You have situation where it is 
just the women that cater for these children all their lives. And the men are having kids by different women and not caring whatever it is that happens mm. to the child. So mm. that is why it might sound a bit like the law is enforcing it more on the men than the yeah. women because it is what is rampant in our state yeah. and we can't deny that. And I think in addition to that... And I get that and um, I, I honestly understand that, but I think for me also more important than the finances so that for me honestly i'm sorry if the man is not ready to do it i am more interested in the um emotional well-being of the, of the child, child. Mm. now when these maintenance um custody battles come up it's not even the parents that go through this form it's the children and because we live in a patriarchal society as it is let us face it in the long run the men tend to get away with this. So I, I, I normally would advocate to single men that, look, honestly, if you can take care of your child, leave him, let him do what he wants. But for the health of your own child, is there a way you can have a relationship for, for your child? Yeah. Because we're also growing up with a lot of children who have daddy issues. Yeah. But, and comfort. So, so for me, it's the balance. You yeah. know, do you want the money or do you want the emotional, comfort. You see what you're talking about. psychological health? You know, so yeah, uh, what you're talking about is actually the crux, and like you're saying, men who don't want for me, that is what I was going to talk about the irresponsibility of certain men. Mm -hmm. Because, how can you get a woman pregnant and you say you don't want the child? Listen, even if you have all the problems in this world with the mother, as long as you're the father of that child, go for your DNA tests, and you know that this is your child, you do not have a choice but to take care of that child. Because if you're not able to take care of your child, what you're saying in essence is that if you were to see somebody in your area who is dyingly in need of help, you would not help that person. That's what you're saying. And you are more of a curse to the society than any other thing. But, but, in, a, <laughs> but in a situation where maybe they used protection for some reason, protection failed, yeah. it goes beyond and he knows that he can't financially be able to afford it. But that's a different thing. Can such a person be held liable to provide when they know you don't have money to do it? I mean, you will be held. The little you have, you must contribute. Exactly. From that. That's it. So, yeah. let's bring you home then. <laughs> Tolu is next after this break. Man down. There is a man down on your streets this evening. He got knocked down. No, not by a drunk driver or hit and run. He got run down by you. He's the man you told to man up yesterday. There's a man down in your church, in your mosque, in your office, in your neighborhood, in your cities, in your country, yes, under your very nose. You just shot a man down. You just shot him down with your unreasonable standards and your inhuman requests and your honest feedback when you told him to man up. Man up, man, man up. Why are you so emotional? Why are you talking like a woman? Nobody cares about your feelings. You know, do these us fans familiar? I'm sure they do. Um, you know, all of us at some point or the other have, you know, obviously said this to a man who exhibited a behavior that in our estimation was less than manly. This begs the question, who is a man? You know, or what is man? You know, a question that has begged answers for centuries and produces as many answers almost as there are men. You know, hunter, gatherer, provider, fighter. No, no, these are the most earliest you know, definitions. But hey, thank God, you know, man has evolved, right? We have upgraded to, you know, macho, you know, head of the home, our family, protector, buff, you know. But have we really evolved? You know, well, the man has evolved from the half-decade, hide-wearing, club-wielding caveman to the alpha male, you know, gentleman in blue blazers and khaki pants. But humor this thought for a minute. Today's man is actually dying under more pressure and takes his life out of these weights more than any time in history, ironically. So I know what you're thinking. Are there no badly behaved men? Is this a case for bad behavior, abuse, or male chauvinism? Oh, no, 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 absolutely not. I'm not that naive. Let me try and put this in perspective. You know, some statistics might help us. You know, so globally, you know, male suicide rate is almost three times the female. The suicide rate in men can be as much as 10 times higher than for women in some countries. You know, Nigeria has the highest rate of suicide in Africa with men leading the numbers. In England, around one in eight men has a common mental health problem, such as depression, anxiety, panic disorder, or OCD, you know, what we call obsessive compulsive disorder. You know, men aged 40 to 49 have the highest suicide rates. 
men report lower levels of life satisfaction than women, according to the government's national well-being survey. You know, men are less likely to access you know, psychological therapies than women. It's 70% of rough sleepers are men. Does your husband know? You know. Um, men are nearly three times as likely as women to become dependent on alcohol and three times as likely to report frequent drug use. Men make up the vast majority of the prison population. There are high rates of mental health problems and increasing rates of self-harm in prisons. Why don't men, t why don't men talk about you know, mental health? Societal expectations and traditional gender roles play a role in why men are less likely to discuss or seek help in their mental health problems. It's important to understand that men can be damaged by stereotypes and expectations as well. So what do we do? I say catch them young. We must immediately begin to ask the question, what kind of boys are we raising today? These boys will soon become men, and their success and or failure will be determined by what we teach them today, actually what we teach them now. Many boys grow up today with a wrong composition. You know, they're just products of conflicting and contradicting information from fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, you know, uncles, and his friends. You know, just like many men today grew up with the wrong composition years ago without even knowing it. So what about the older men, you say? We must start getting rid of our stereotypes you know, right away and start giving them a chance to speak. So basically be an heir, or be a shoulder to a man, encourage men to open up. By doing so, you might just be saving the life of another man down. Mm. All right. What <laughs> scary statistics. I know, right? Do you know that um, four in five men that I know, and this is not even pulling numbers from the sky, are on BP medication? Yeah. Right? Because everything is suppressed. You're not yeah. allowed to speak out. Yeah, You're not allowed yeah. to show emotions. Mm, yeah. And for me, the scary part is there's actually a knock-on effect in the home because you've raised um, men that are emotionally bankrupt, so they're not able to feel the emotions that their home requires. Yeah love, yes. empathy, support, mm -hmm. kindness, mm -hmm. because they're supposed to be stoic and strong. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't even benefit anyone at the end of the day. Yeah. The man is depressed, the man is very stressed, he ends up on medication, mm -hmm. right? Then he takes it out on his family yeah, so and repeats the cycle all over again. Exactly. It is scary, it's not attractive. I think it's so old school. It's not attractive to say that men should not show emotions. Why not? You've lost someone, it's okay to cry. Yeah. It doesn't make you any less of who you are. Yeah. You know, yes, you show emotions and then you move to action because ultimately there's a problem it needs to be solved. Yeah. But it doesn't yeah. make you any less of who you are. And we really need to stop the stereotype, you know, which is actually sometimes coming from women, right? The expectations from women that he's a sissy because mm. he showed emotion. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, we see that all the time, you know, even on TV. It's like, why is he crying? Act like a man. Mm. And you are correct. Right. Th that's man down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. one down, absolutely. And, and like I even saying, it even goes beyond the emotion. I mean, like saying the women bit, some say, oh, he's not man enough. How much does he have? How much does he earn? And this man is already working like 10 hours in a day. I mean, and, and the thing is, he doesn't have the support that will mold them to discover a better him. You know, some men will marry women that will tell them, oh, what you're doing, you could do it this way, that way, that way. And the man changes and is making more money. But some women will just run them down. But well, it even goes beyond that again. I think we are not facing the realities of our time. We're still applying what was given in the days like years ago, in the olden days. We're applying it to this modern time where everything has changed. Back then, the needs were less. The expectation was just for you to get married, go to the farm, come back home. But now there's so much that is being demanded of you. You have the bad economy, <laughs> you, have, you have so many things to grapple with. And to even uh, add salt to injury, if you are a fan of Arsenal, that's even a lot of you. <laughs> you haven't won any cup in a long time. Like <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yes, I, I think you're very right. There are this, these little things we do have a, can I say, an effect, a ripple effect on every other aspect of life, from work to home, even to religion. Because a pastor now that is depressed, We'll get to the pulpit and tell everybody, you better believe God or you die. And we'll <laughs> preach some kind of sermons or an imam will act in a way. So, yes, man down is, is something we all need to look at. These things usually start from when children are really little. Mm. So, I have a son and when maybe he falls or something, I remember we had a nanny then and she would say, 
Why are you crying? Stop crying. You're a man. You're a man. And I told her, no, stop, please. Let him cry. He's hurt. Mm -hmm. Let him express how yeah, he feels. Absolutely. He's still a child. Yes. Let him cry. He's allowed to. Yeah. The mm. fact that he's a boy does not make him Superhero. not feel pain. Exactly. Mm. Do you understand? Yes. He has to feel pain and express that. His arms won't grow back when you cut exactly. them off. Definitely. There's yeah. blood. He needs yeah. to yeah. express that. Oh, yeah. this is. Yeah. So I think it starts from, from how little they are. I, I wouldn't tell a child, don't cry. You need to cry, especially mm. for boys. Mm. Cry. It's okay to cry. Let mm. them understand that. They have these emotions and it's very important for them to express it. Mm, if they have something, you see some who say, ah, this, this man talks too much. Mm -hmm. That's his way of expressing himself. Absolutely. If he doesn't talk, he's going to suppress things. Absolutely. And it's going to come out in a completely different yeah, way exactly. that you don't like or appreciate. So mm -hmm. the earlier we begin to have that conversation and encourage our men, our brothers, our, our husbands, our uncles, our dads, if there's an issue, if you notice something and they're shielded, they... Their way of dealing with it is just to be on their own. You can reach yeah. out to them and yeah. lend our voices to them. What, what's, allow, what's yeah, going allow them, on? Allow them speak would, up. Absolutely. Exactly. And, 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 you know, you and, just nailed it. Sorry, yeah. you just nailed it on the head by saying expression because an emotion, and mm -hmm. Uche said emotion, expression, mm -hmm. you know, the same thing, more or less, same size of the coin. Because, you see, one of the things that separates a human really from an animal is emotion and expression. Mm -hmm. It's one of the things that makes us different. And we're built, humans were built for expression and emotion. So from that little age, I mean, for most young boys, the first thing they ever hear growing up is, why are you crying? Be a boy, be a man, yeah. are you a girl, right? And the moment you start to do that, you're starting to stifle his expression from when he's that young. And it takes, and you see, the thing with humans is, they humans will express themselves. It's the nature of humans to express themselves. Mm. So that expression will come out. You just need to ask yourself, do you want it positively? Or negative. or negative. And comfort. How are you expressing yourself from Abuja? <laughs> <laughs> In a conflicted, I'm conflicted about this one. Exactly. Um, um, I, I mean, I, I would like to see my man take charge. I'm sorry. I, I don't want to see tears. He can do that oh, inside the house. Oh, comfort. I mean, I'm a bit conflicted about this, but, but, I agree with you absolutely that the man now is also in a very precarious position currently. But I think that both the females and the males are culprits here. Mm. So you have women now who have more power, more ability to express themselves, more desires, more wants, more vanity. And then you have men who determine their self-worth by their sexual powers and by their financial ability. So you have this woman on this side who has this power, this man who wants to meet up also. So there's also the pressure within, and we're not being honest anymore. Mm. We're not being honest. So, um, so at this point, especially with the current situation, there would need to be a lot of unlearning, uh, even for the adult male population now that, look, you can't kill yourself because your woman wants to wear um, um, 250K yeah. hair per week. Just so that you too, you, the man too, can fit like a man. into a certain <laughs> social circle. <laughs> but you see, if you have to go, if the man has to go down that route, he needs to assume a certain position. Mm. But the current narrative on the side of the woman is that she's not supposed to be listening to any man telling her no, no, no. And she too is supposed to express herself. So there's, there's, we're messing with other things. Then there's the yeah. continual conflict. And so both parties just keep on doing what they want to do, mm. um, trying to find a middle ground for peace. Yeah. Uh, I heard I had a male um, follower reach out to me and say, when he was getting married, he needed to talk to men. Just any older man, like the way women do. You know, women have, well, that's what helps us. We, we like to gossip. So we have groups of friends that we gossip with. We tell everything. So in a manner of speaking, we unburden ourselves get, and then we're able to do it. But men do, don't do that. What they do when in, they meet in their gatherings is usually to talk about Arsenal, as you said, Chelsea, and the new drink in town or the new babe in town, not the core issues. Mm. So I think that's another part that guys have to, when you come together, it's not about the superficial issues, yeah. but talk to yourselves. We should stop feeling yes. ashamed. Talk to yourselves. Comfort, absolutely agree with you. Well, yes. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, we're almost out of time now. Uh, thank you, Comfort. Fantastic <laughs> <laughs> feedback right there. So Uche is next after the break. Please don't go anywhere. No is no. Kikari was a vivacious young girl living with her mom in a busy part of Ukukumaiko in Lagos, Nigeria. 
It was not unusual for her mom to ask her child to go and buy biscuits from Mama BC, whose kiosk served as the local grocery store. It was also usual for the neighbors to watch TV in each other's homes, as not everyone owned one. One day, the evil monster called Rape reared its head in the person of the male neighbor who had always had a smile and a kind word for Kikari. The family did nothing, and so the police did nothing. Hush, no one must know. It's your fault. You've brought disgrace to us, as though this was the fault of Kikari and not the wicked act of a pervert who should be locked away and the kish thrown away forever. Did you know that in Nigeria, in 2020 alone, there was nearly 40% increase in rape and domestic sexual violence against women. Are you aware that in 2018, the official Nigerian Demographic and Health Survey found that 30% of girls and women aged between 15 and 49 reported suffering sexual abuse in one form or another. So this means that one in three women that you know, a child, a sister, a colleague, a friend, a cosmate, a relative has been sexually assaulted or violated. The scary part is she may never speak about it to you or anyone for fear that she is ridiculed and humiliated because of our culture of shaming and because we live in a society which says, why were you dressed like this? What were you looking for there? Good girls don't get raped. How can you say you did not want it? What were you doing there? Now, just to be clear, Rape is a criminal offence in Nigeria. Under the Criminal Code of Nigeria, Section 357 and 358, rape is defined as having unlawful carnal knowledge of a woman or girl without her consent or with her consent. If the consent is obtained by force or by means of threat or intimidation of any kind or by fear of harm or by means of false act or in case of a married woman by pretending to be her husband. Now this offense is actually punishable by imprisonment for life with or without caning. Under the Penal Code of Nigeria, Section 282, a man is set to commit rape who has had sexual intercourse with a woman in any of the following circumstances, against her will, without her consent, with her consent when the consent is obtained by putting her in fear of death or hurt. However, this code is only applicable in the northern states of Nigeria. Yet, according to the International Center for Investigative Reporting website, there have been only 65 rape convictions between 1973 and 2019 in Nigeria. What an abysmal number considering the prevalence of this crime considering that one in three women you know have been sexually molested or assaulted. Is it that the victims are not reporting for fear of shame? Is it that we've kept inadequate records? Or is it a poorly administered judicial system that protects a perpetrator over a victim? How can we explain to people that no is no? How can we remind everyone that a child is not a sex toy? How can we hold our courts accountable when cases are actually reported? How can we rid our society of this despicable act? How can we support rape victims when they actually do come forward? The time has come for changes to the criminal code to be more stringent to punish perpetrators of this crime. There is urgency required in changing the mindset that a rape victim is somehow responsible for this offense. We actually need a sex offenders register where those who have been found guilty can actually be listed to protect us from future occurrences. However, we only have less than 70 names. We need to learn to speak up when we hear such accusations. We need to empower people to actually speak up when they have been victims of this crime. We need to teach everyone that no is no. Mm. Hello? <laughs> All right, go on, comfort. <laughs> this is one topic that tears my heart. Um, I have a daughter, and um, even I, as you were right, I think I don't think there's any woman 
is in Nigeria that has not been a victim of sexual um, assault or indecency exposure. I don't think there's any because we are in a society where it, it, it's almost as if the woman is just there for, you know, for the taking. Um, I'm, I think the major issue here, apart from the judicial system, is the conspiracy of silence. Mm. And unfortunately, it's the women who drive the conspiracy. You have mothers in homes that know that their fathers, the husbands are sleeping with their daughters. But she wants to save her marriage because society has said she must be married. And if she and it is somehow her fault. And so it's a vicious circle. You have aunties that know. You have sisters that know. And everybody says be quiet. Now imagine if women who are custodians, especially the women who are custodians and the ones that are the major victims in this, doesn't mean that there aren't men or boys. I think even some of our laws have been amended to reflect that um, a man can be raped too. Yeah. But because the, the preponderance of the crime is on the side of the female, I feel so disheartened that women are not playing the, the you know, the role enough in this. I think the most recent case we have is that Baba Ijesha case. And one of a woman just came out two days ago, an older woman to say that she begged Iyabo not to talk. Why? Why? If there's something that was done to this girl that needs to be reported, why is it that we think that these things should be hushed and kept quiet? Unless we break the, this Culture circle of, of conspiracy of silence, honestly, there's nothing that can be done. Honestly, the, the, we will probably will not even see any, any rape case in another 10 years, any conviction. Mm, so yeah. we need to speak to women. We need to empower our girls. We need to also tell them that even if it is because they said the girl was walking naked, it does not give any man, right. any That's woman, true. any right to rape. True. Go and report instead that there's a mad person running from the streets mm -hmm. and kind right. of person, but not to rape. Absolutely, I agree with you, uh, Comfort. And you know, another, another big problem, and I don't want to even go into the problems. I'm talking more about the solution, but another big problem is the fact that the little, little things that we allow, you know, that we're allowed to happen that lead to these things. You know, a lot of men are so uneducated and so ignorant. A lot of families are so, I mean, the ignorance is astounding. I have two daughters. I mean, there are certain places I don't hit my daughters when I'm playing with them. So they understand True. that touching this part of your it's body no is not like even by your father. Mm -hmm. You know, they put his oh, uncle. I say, no, it's not your uncle. Is it your uncle? Is it related to me? No, is it related to your mother? No. So he's mister. So there are certain boundaries, boundaries that we have mm. to start. Oh, my daughters are seven and two. You know, from that level, you have to start indoctrinating these things. So they realize that, you know what, even if their mother wants to be unfortunate, or any other family member, by themselves, because they've been empowered, they understand there's some things that should yeah, right, not be and allowed, you know, to happen. So we have to start looking at these little mm. things. So someone comes in, also come and sit. No, don't sit on his lap. No, there's a chair. It's, it's, sit on the chair. No you know, area. Because, I mean, maybe 50 years ago, 100 years ago, it was okay to sit on your own. The mind was because they had, Yeah, but today, there's so many people around that even have these tendencies that even they don't know until they, you know, exactly. until yeah. they start to exhibit mm. those things. So mm. it's very important that very early on, we start to indoctrinate our daughters. Mm -hmm. Looks like that's where we have to start now, because we want to go to the 17 men that have been reported since 1970. You know, that's, mm -hmm. I don't even want to go into that. I think, I think dealing with our daughters and, and again, dealing and with sons. the men yes. as yes. well. Because yes. listen, it is, there is nothing for me as barbaric, as inhumane, as, as, use any word, any adjective you want, as rape. Because what you are saying is, it's demeaning, in my view, it's an insult. It's great. It's bigger than saying, like we say, your mother. It's as in this is the height of it, because you're taking someone. Sex is so important that it, it's it, that's someone's pride. Sense, yes. If he's giving it to you or she's giving it to you herself, fine. But you're taking it. I personally feel that it might sound harsh, but I feel any man that is able to rape, she's not just being the sex offenders register. Register should be castrated. Fine, because listen, do I'm, t I'm telling you because I mean, for you to even go, what is it? They said with or without caning. I don't caning, understand. I, well, the caning, I mean, that's, we, it. that's <laughs> the minimum requirement. Minimum. So you, know? you see, so that and that's how bad it is for me. But I like to go on the touchy bit a bit, which we are a lot of time we don't like to talk about. And I'll start this way so that we can understand. Listen, if I drive um, a G wagon 2020 model, and I drive it go to Oshodi or let's say any other place, and I leave the ignition in, the key in, I wind down. I come down from the car and I cross the road to buy something and my car is stolen. I'll be called careless, but that doesn't mean the, the police is not, is not the responsibility to go look for the car for me. 
All right. I think looking at the, the demands of our time, looking at the mind frame of men, right? Even some women set these women up for rape. We yeah. need to, and some men are so careless and so weak mentally that anything they see, they must touch. And we don't have a security to protect you. I think our women, not the kids, but the women who have control over their body, who can go to any place at any time, we need to start watching how we appear in certain places most importantly. I know, yes, I know a lot of times we say, As my body, the fact that my body is this doesn't mean, if it turns you, it means you are weak. Yes, we know it's weak. But when it affects you, the law is not strong, uh, not the law this time, because the law is there to protect you, yes. although we don't apply it. But the security and the condition there is not strong enough to, to protect, because listen, that I saw on TV yesterday about six guys that were accused of raping a girl and killing her in a law university of Illinois. Looking at them, it's obvious they were on drugs. The amount of drug abuse we have in the system right now, and a man seeing a lady that is already undressed in a particular way, it doesn't mean you don't have your rights. The same way you have your right to drive your car, pack it anywhere. In some, in some places in Lagos, and when you're driving, you hide your phone. You don't hold it. It's your phone. You bought it with your money. But for your own safety, you keep it just to avoid anything going wrong with you. I think we need to no, look no, at that no. as well. I, 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 can't. Aha. I disagree. I, I said it's I touchy, I, but I, I, know. I, I completely disagree with you. I don't okay. agree because that's not a sustainable solution. It's not even a solution. Do you understand? If you see a man walking naked, a man, there are mad men that walk up and down the streets naked because they are mad. Yeah. Do, do, do women go after them and say they want to? Because you don't have that problem yet. No, but, but even women, I don't but, think that's but, a sustainable solution. And it's not even a solution because how do you say I should control what I wear based on somebody? There are women that are hijabed from head to toe, but they get ripped. No, you know, you no, no, no hold on. And that's why I use the car as an example. The fact that you're keeping your car on the road and it's stolen. Now, you can even park your car in the house, put your fence, and people will still check. But yet, when you are in town, you don't say, okay, because I pack it at home and everybody can steal it, you leave it right, right. I, I mean, I in a way that will. I think we need to look at that, that bill that's as well. Even is, that should not, that's the most <laughs> sensitive part and should not be discussed. There are little children. Most of these things happen actually when they are little. The highest percentages yes. are from a certain age bracket, mm -hmm. and they are mostly young, vulnerable yeah. girls. So, whether, so are you saying a child wearing certain things is going to appeal to a man. No, no, listen. That's what I'm saying. There are different aspects, Ruben. We can discuss this on and so, on. So, I, I, so, I, so and, and I know, I mean, and I know this, this has no end, you know, yeah, but just it. to speak a bit to what he said. So, in my understanding of what you're saying yeah. is, let's educate both the younger women and older women. Older women, yeah. You know, so what you educate them on is also important. So, if you say to them, oh, you know, don't wear this or don't wear that, it's, that's not really the conversation. You know, it's not about really what you're wearing. Is first there's a male species that has Who's a problem. Mind? Exactly. Right? Then you must. So if you understand, if you're going to lions, then you know this is a lion. Exactly. If you're going to see a dog, you know this is a dog. You know this so you know dog. The, so, so, so you children watch. who don't have the those yeah. are exceptional cases. They're not Chinese. exceptional no, I, cases. They're the anyway, most rampant cases. We, we could, right, I didn't <laughs> know that. You know, you know, right? The the a woman's body belongs to her. If she 100%. says no, no is no. Mm. There's, there are no excuses Every to it. We need to start to educate the men to do better. Right? We need to start Agreed. to educate men. If there are many women willing to give it up for free, of you don't need to rape a woman. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we hope that this conversation triggers something in you. Um, we, it, it's, it's never enough time for us to deep dive, but we want it to be a conversation starter. Go and have those conversations with people and let's start to fix our nation one, one problem at a time. So join us again next week on another edition of The Advocate. The Advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa. Hashtag the advocate ng and on Instagram it's plus TV Africa. Hashtag the advocate ng and to catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plus TV Africa.com slash the advocate ng. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel on plus TV Africa. Join us next week, same time on this station, and let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.